What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new reaction. Now, before we get into today's video, I gotta say, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Y'all are amazing. Y'all really are. Without y'all, literally nothing would be possible. So to all the mothers watching this video, I hope you have a great day and happy Mother's Day. And if you're watching this and you haven't called your mom yet, what the, what are you doing? Call your dang mom. What the heck? But yeah, shout out to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. We're actually going to the zoo with my girlfriend's mom. And then once we get home, we have to drive like an hour to go see my stepmom. But hey, it's all worth it. It's their day. So shout out to all the moms out there. Y'all are dope. But today we are watching five ways British and American kitchens are very different. Now listen, I didn't mean to do this one on Mother's Day. It just kind of fell, okay? <laughs> kitchens are probably most mom's favorite place in the house. You know, they like to cook. They be cooking better than anybody else in the house. Besides me, I, I, I can whip it a little bit. <laughs> but I've always wondered just how different are kitchens over here in America are compared to the ones in the UK. Like, I've heard people say you got your washer in your kitchen. That ain't gonna happen in America, alright? Unless you live in a very small house. Usually there's gonna be a whole separate room for your washer. But hey, that's why we're here. We're here to learn. So we're about to get into it. If y'all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Try to hit 100k. Once you do me in a UK theme tattoo, drop a like if you want to see more reactions like this. Go check out my second channel. Link down in the description. But other than that, let's get into it. That scared me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And I like the red frames. Pertains to kitchens. It's that time of year again, of course, when food sees its approval rating shoot to new heights. And while I continue Thanks. to look at the way in which British and American food varies wildly, the same is true of kitchens. Sure, some American kitchens on the whole might be larger than their British counterparts, just by virtue of the fact that houses are. But for once, I'm not sure, going to concentrate sure. on size. Instead, today, I'm going to stick... Hey, that's hard for a lot of guys to do. <laughs> ...of hand deep down into the details of how we use our kitchens. From etiquette to gadgets, here are five ways that British and American kitchens are very different. Wait a minute, are we giving our kitchens a prostate exam? Is that what it... What, with the rubber glove? <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this or not, but the homeland of Britain may or may not be obsessed with tea. We're so obsessed, in fact, that when everybody was worried about running out of toilet roll, we were clearing the shelves of PG tips. And <laughs> our obsession with tea can be seen through the gadget we use to make it, the electric kettle. The oh, electric yeah. kettle is a kettle that is electric. That is, you plug it into the wall. Now, I don't have British plug sockets where I live, so what you're seeing right now is not completely authentic. But the electric kettle at my house is made by the British company Russell Hobbs. You simply plug it in, put water in it, switch it on, and wait for it to boil. No, that one's up. That's fancy. That's got a little dial on the front and everything. Not not ours. Listen, we got one, an electric kettle, that somebody sent us while we were doing the P.O. box openings. Shout out to you. We use it damn near every day now. But before we got that one, I, I didn't have a kettle in my house. I really didn't. Like, I never had a a use for it until I got an electric one and it's so easy like all you gotta do is plug it in and flip the little switch and wait now we use it damn near every day it's it's great <laughs> now any British people watching this might be thinking how on earth do Americans make tea well firstly Americans don't drink tea quite as much as British people and secondly even though America doesn't have a royal family coffee is king not literally that would be absurd but for Americans <laughs> who do drink tea or hot drinks that aren't coffee they usually have stovetop kettles they work much the same way as electric kettles except you don't plug them in and the only thing that you turn on is the stove see I I thought it would have been kind of backwards like I thought y'all would use more like a stovetop kettle and then we would like have the electric kettle like not trying to say like <laughs> y'all are stuck in the old ages or nothing but like i feel like a stovetop kettle would be more like authentic i, I did not know like that wasn't a common thing to use stovetops over in the uk I have to say, while I don't have a major preference between both types of kettles, there is something a little bit satisfying about a kettle that whistles. Facts. Yes. Plus, That's that honestly the only good part about it. <laughs> you know when it's done. Even if you're in another wing of your house. Another room of your house. Either way, when it comes to Britain, the hey, electric kettle a is different the house. only kitchen gadget that uses water. Washing machines in a kitchen 
Sorry, America, for most Brits, this is a harsh reality. I know it. say harsh, most of us wouldn't want it any other way. When I was growing up, the washing machine was right there next to the kitchen sink. It makes sense. It makes sense. Like, all of the plumbing is right there. It would be so much easier than to have to run it through the house to a completely different room. It's actually pretty smart. It was an easy way to consolidate chores and get chicken curry in your underpants. And it doesn't end there because sure, a lot of British sure. washing machines also contain a dryer in one machine. It's not a great idea because the dryer is usually rubbish. Hence why yeah. a lot of Brits still put their clothes out on a washing but machine. But still, why? Why isn't that a thing? Just make it one machine. There, all you have to do is press a button. Oh, it's done washing. Press another button and it starts drying. Forget all that unloading, reloading, unload. No, nah, make it one machine. Yo. Across the pond, look around most kitchens in the United States and you won't find a washing machine. Nah. You might sometimes find them in a kind of pseudo laundry room that's attached to the kitchen. Yeah. But not normally beneath the microwave. I think <laughs> sinks in. And speaking of sinks, that brings us on to this. Yeah, no. Nah, my laundry room is like, okay, so. If you watch my second channel, you'll like, you kind of know the layout of my house a little bit better. But, like, you walk in the back door and you're instantly in the kitchen. And then you turn right. Here, let, I'll show you. Okay, so it's very dark because it's like 11 o'clock at night when I record this. <laughs> but boom, you're in the kitchen. You come over here. There's the bedroom door. There's the fridge. And then there's the laundry room with laundry that I haven't done yet. Look at us going on little adventures and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that's how my house is set up. It's kind of weird and like not all houses are going to be the same. But yeah, my laundry room is right off from my kitchen. Join me now and imagine a dystopian future in which humanity has run out of dishwashers. What would we do? Well, the answer to that question might depend on the country that you live in. For example, Americans would be more likely than Brits to hand wash their dishes under water running from a tap. On the other hand, Brits might be more likely than Americans to clean them in a sink filled with hot water. This is- Listen, listen. We have a dishwasher. I hand wash my dishes anyways because like we don't really we never have that many anyways. But growing up, listen, you weren't running that water the whole time. Uh-uh, you were filling up one side with soapy water. That's where you did your washing. Then you filled up another side with just plain water and that's where you rinsed them. We're not running that water bill up around here, uh-uh. The UK just be saving money. Like, y'all are smart with it. <laughs> like, if I was rich, oh, I'm running the water the whole time. Forget filling it up. But no, nah, we're saving water bill money around here. We gotta fill them sinks up. <laughs> it's partly done to be more economical with water use, but it's also because British yeah. homes didn't, and in some cases still don't, have mixer taps. In other words, most British homes were equipped with separate hot and cold taps. Yeah. And so cleaning dishes under a running hot tap might result in third degree burns. <laughs> However, we find almost universally with mixer taps, which help them to regulate temperature, Americans don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Additionally, American kitchen sinks often come equipped with gadgets that might seem alien in some British homes. For example, and this is one of my favorites, the garbage disposal. This is a mechanical feature inside plug holes that breaks up waste. Yeah. It's also the cause of death for 57% of people in American horror films. <laughs> and the other nice <laughs> gadget that's found in a lot of American sinks is the sprayer hose. This is kind of a pre-clean thing where you spray all of the gunk off the plate. Y'all don't have sprayers? What do you do? That's how I filled 90% of stuff up or rinse 90% of stuff off, is with the sprayer. What the heck? It's like a little shower for your dishes. It's great. And then you clean your plate under regulated warm water. So, okay, in this dishwasherless dystopian nightmare, both countries do at least have options. But what about when it comes to drying the dishes? In Britain, it's fairly normal not to rinse the soap off before letting the dishes dry on the drying rack. Once there, the what? soap in theory slides off or dissolves. It was hard to explain that to my American wife because Americans, for the most part, rinse off the soap with tap water or, if you're feeling lucky, the sprayer hose. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all don't rinse the suds off? Huh? What? And either leave it to dry in the drying rack or may or may not get to it straight away with a towel. Now, I've never been passionately in favor of one method over the other, but the argument often thrown forward for the British way is that rinsing can leave water stains. And I suppose that's true if you're lazy and thinking about it, I am. If I wasn't, <laughs> I probably wouldn't make use of these. Hang on, wait, so, I mean, that makes sense, water stains, but doesn't, 
wouldn't that like make like whatever you put on the plate or all, like in the bowl or whatever you pick up with the spoon, wouldn't that make it taste like the soap? Because you didn't rinse the soap completely off? Like, think about it like washing your hair. If you don't rinse your hair out, then there's still going to be soap in there. Yeah, it might dry, but there's still going to be soap in there and it's going to feel weird. What the heck? That's, that, 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 no, that's wild. <laughs> Egg cups. What on earth is an egg cup? And I'm not exclusively throwing that question at Americans, because Americans of a certain region or generation have often told me, What oh, the we heck? Had those growing up. I don't, that was really British, sorry. But the <laughs> fact is, most Americans are probably not familiar with egg cups and most certainly don't have them in their houses. On the other hand, according to a law that I just made up, it's illegal for British kitchens not to have one. We're even handed them at birth. The parents walk away with a baby, an egg cup, and four boxes of PG tips. But what do we use them for? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is where the lazy part of Lawrence comes in. They house soft boiled eggs, and these are soft boiled eggs that have had the top knocked off them. I've never been really good at that part. And what you do is you dip toast or bread soldiers into the egg. And it is the most amazing breakfast in the whole world, and you're all wrong. Shut up. That just blew my mind. That actually just blew my mind. Huh? That's so smart. I didn't, I thought that, I thought it was just a decoration. What the heck? Yo. I did not know that at all. It has a... Egg cups. I do realize that for some of you, you've just learned a new word. Perfect segue <laughs> to this. Just to bring us full circle, there are, of course, many British and American word differences when it comes to food. I have done and will continue to do videos on that. But here's a short sample of variations in kitchen lingo. In Britain, whether or not the hot and cold taps are unified, tap is the word we go for. And while I have heard that word applied in the United States, Americans will often opt for faucet. Yeah. And sometimes when the plumbing's bad and the water won't come out, you might have to force it. <laughs> Sorry, that joke only works in Britain. Anyway, sometimes I don't even say like faucet. I just say sink. Like get it out the sink, turn the sink on, do something like that. Like sometimes saying faucet is too, I don't even know the word, like too descriptive. Just, just put it in the sink. <laughs> Whether it is tap or faucet, you will need one to do the washing up. Washing up, that's what Americans say when they just take five minutes to clean themselves. In Britain, that's our phrase for doing the dishes. And if we're not being lazy, we might dry the dishes by hand. In order to do this, we use what is known as a tea towel. Yeah. In America, I've heard many variants on this, but you might be hard pressed to find somebody that uses the term tea towel. Instead, in Indiana, I think I most commonly heard dish towel. Yep. In my house, I don't know about anybody else's. It's either different. dish towel or hand towel. Like, I know a hand towel would be like in the bathroom so you could dry your hands on the hand towel after you get done washing, but like, that's what I, that's what I call it. It's either a hand towel or a dish towel. And often be found hanging from the oven. I don't know why I did that, because actually both countries use the word oven. But in Britain, <laughs> we also call it a cooker, and that's something for which my wife has ridiculed me for 15 years. Thank you for watching this latest Vlogmas episode. Hey, there wasn't too many differences, but the differences we had, they were significant. <laughs> the egg cup got me, bro. Like, what? And plus, his were cute little guys. Like, that's dope. But all right, guys, that is going to do it for five ways British and American kitchens are very different. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. If you got some other differences that you know of that maybe he didn't mention in this video, let me know down in the comments. I'm interested. I'm invested now, all right? But that is going to do it for today's reaction. Again, shout out to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a great day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure y'all go out today. Spread love, spread kindness. Do something nice for somebody. Do, do something nice for your mom, all right? Actually, yeah, do something nice for your mom today. Thank you guys so much for today's reaction. And I'm out. Peace.